My name is Alan George and I am honored that I get to spend this time with you as we talk about building an effective digital strategy for our churches. It was March 14, 2020. I was on staff at Life Church as a church online pastor. Now, I'd been in that role for close to 10 years by then, but I remember getting the first email letting us know that a couple of our physical locations were closing because of COVID. Soon after that, we got more emails letting us know of a few other locations having to close. Another one, and then another one, and the phone calls and text messages kept coming, and then pretty soon, all of our physical locations were shutting down. By that point, as a church, we had been doing church online for about 14 years, but we had never faced a situation where all of our physical locations were closed and online being our only option. We didn't know what to expect, but we started getting ready. And the same was happening all over the world. I'm guessing you had to deal with the same thing. Churches were having to close their doors and figure out a plan for how to move forward. Life Church, we had created the Church Online platform, a free tool that allows churches to broadcast their services digitally and chat with people who attend their services. Suddenly, we saw around 30,000 churches sign up for the platform overnight because of what was happening. Thousands of people were thrust into the role of being an online pastor or director or leader of some sort, and everyone was trying to figure out what to do. All of a sudden, everyone saw this rise in people showing up online. Pastors and church leaders started experiencing firsthand the impact and the potential of online ministry. We moved from waiting for people to show up at our buildings to doing everything we could to meet people where they were. I, I know this is true for you too. I remember seeing this and uh, if you open up Instagram or Facebook, you could see so many people going live on their channels. People were hosting Bible studies and worship experiences from their living rooms. Groups were meeting together on Zoom and it felt like everyone was online. I remember speaking to many pastors and everyone talked about how their communities were actually letting them know that their people felt more connected to their church than ever before. Everyone was just figuring it out one day at a time, and digital ministry remained at that time at the forefront of churches' minds. There was one pastor I spoke to. He called me and he shared his experience of being online. He said, I'm praying with people, Alan, and, and it's like I'm really praying with them. Like, I didn't know this was possible online. And I said, yes, I know. It's incredible. That's when you could hear pastors saying the church is not the building. We are the church. Of course, no one really knew what metrics to look at or what data to collect, but we pushed forward and God continued to show up. We all said it. The church is not the building. We are the church. Then the buildings reopened and soon we swung the pendulum to the opposite side. You know, pastors, leaders and teams were frantically trying to get their people to come back. We went from the church is not the building to actually we would love it if you guys could come back because this is where the magic happens. You know, there's something powerful about being in a room together and how God is here with us and when we meet in person and so on and so forth. We stopped our back porch Bible studies and went back to waiting on our stages for people to come back. Here's the truth. And you know this. The church cannot be stopped. God cannot be stopped. The church is the body of Christ. The church is not a building. And the church is also not an online platform. We are the church. And history shows us again and again that whenever the church has faced struggles or persecution, it led to the church getting stronger and stronger. But we want certainty. In fact, that's why you're here. That's why we reach out and talk to people. We look to others to see what they're doing and try to learn from different churches and ministries. One of the things that I noticed personally during this time was that everyone else was doing what everyone else was doing. We didn't think through the why churches were taking approach. We just figured if they were doing it, we should probably do it too. It was groupthink on a massive scale. In fact, here's how I see it. 
Over the years, we've gotten better at designing and building a plan for our in-person services. We've learned to think through what someone would experience the moment they pull into our parking lot and walk into our buildings. We've thought through how we will greet people at the door and make sure that they can easily find their way around our building. We'll help them find the right seats for them and make sure if we're asking them to take their next step, that we've got all the forms or sign-up sheets available right there. Now, if you're a multi-site church, the same model or plan that you've built works because you've got multiple locations essentially doing the same thing. At its core, the idea of a multi-site church is about delivering a smaller and closer to home experience for your community. So if you have a plan that works for one location, the idea behind multi-site is that it should help you scale that model to multiple locations. Then COVID happened. That's when the mass majority of churches switched to doing ministry online. And what did we do? We took the plan we created for our in-building or in-person experience and dropped it into an online space across all of the digital platforms. And we expected to see the same type of engagement, but it didn't work. The plan that worked for us all this time didn't work for us anymore. We didn't know how to measure anything either. We tried to measure engagement online like we measured engagement in person, but that didn't work either. So what do we do? Today, the people we're reaching in our communities, they've changed. The way they interact with technology has changed across almost every area of their life, except maybe when it comes to their church. Think about the grocery store, your local library, the clinic down the street, your favorite restaurant. They've all moved to meet their people where they are versus expecting them to come back to how it used to be. I believe that this is our opportunity to meet our people where they're at. The old plan won't do anymore. Our churches require a fresh strategy that aligns with our vision and mission while promoting the spiritual growth of our people. It should also be pertinent and designed to suit the intended function and purpose of each platform we utilize. So where do we start? I believe that we start with clarifying our organizational purpose. Uh, I think it was Andy Stanley who once said, everyone ends up somewhere, but few people end up somewhere on purpose. We've all heard that. Most of us have clarified our mission statement, but I highly recommend taking the time to go over this again. Talk about the vision and values you have as a church. How have we done with this, especially in the last couple of years with everything we faced? The three questions that I like to start with within this context are these. First, why do we exist? Give yourself and your team an opportunity to wrestle with this question. Do we all still agree with our purpose or has anything changed? Should it change? Does everyone on our teams, both staff and volunteers, know how to answer this question? And will we all answer it the same way? This is the fuel that keeps our engine running. Clarity at this level is extremely important. When we don't have clarity here, we find ourselves heading in many different directions. Our teams honestly won't really understand why we do some of the things we do unless there's clarity here. So that's the first one. The second question to ask ourselves is this, who do we exist for? Now this is, this is where it begins to get a little tricky. We may be tempted to say that we're called to reach everyone, but that's not actually possible. And we're probably not reaching every single person on earth. So who do we exist for? Is there an age group we can specify? Stage of life, demographic, economic status? Uh, try and be as specific and clear as possible. In fact, try and imagine the life that this person you're trying to reach is living right now. Um, the job that they have. Are they single or are they married? Kids or no kids? What struggles are they faced with? Do they have people they can turn to? What would draw someone like this to our church? How would their lives be different? The more detailed you're here, the more clarity you will have as we keep going. Because 
you want to layer this strategy, this, this strategy you have for your church, you want to layer this on top of um, what you currently have and how does digital fit into that? So those are the first two questions. And the third one that we want to end with is this. What do we want them to think, feel, believe, and do? This is a critical step in this process because this is when you begin to start working on your strategy based on why you exist and who you believe you are called to reach what do you want that person to think feel believe and what action do you want them to take what do you want them to do when they interact with your church here's where we begin to create what i call a spiritual growth framework for our people what do i mean by that it's about identifying the actions that we believe our people should take on a regular basis, which leads them to live the life that God has for them. For example, we believe that people should spend time in the Word of God daily. We believe that prayer is an important part of our journey with Christ. We also believe in the gathering of saints and, and think through what that looks like for whether it's meeting online or in person. We believe in baptism and serving our local community. It's essential for you and the team to clearly identify these practices. And don't just think within the framework of your weekly gathering on Sundays. Like you have an opportunity. Remember, with technology, you don't have to wait for your people to come to your building. You can meet them right where they're at. You can actually walk alongside them as a guide and a friend, pointing them to Jesus. Once you have this, now you have the opportunity to look at your framework and then build a plan that's specific to each platform you're on. So based on what we've talked about, what does a YouTube strategy look like? And how do we build a strategy that's specific to that platform? A YouTube strategy needs to look different from an in-person strategy, and that needs to look different from your church app strategy or the strategy you have for your web. Take some time after this video to think through each of these steps and figure out what is the right next step for you. Each generation infuses the church with new ideas, perspectives, and innovations that are descriptive of the time in which they live. Churches used to be the center of towns. Then churches moved to urban areas and, and provided community services, as well as spiritual guidance and most recently churches moved to the suburbs and built these sprawling facilities even multiple locations to connect people with each other and god in the midst of all that i want you to remember that you are here for such a time as this i believe it was saint augustine who said this without him we can't and without us he won't he chooses to work through us embrace this moment don't let the doubts you have uh, in you cloud the calling of God on you. So take these strategies that we talked about. Think about them. How do they apply for your church and your context? You know, identifying who we are and who we're called to reach. And once you layer digital on top of that, does that reflect who we truly are being? And once you have that, how do we want our people to respond? What do we want them to think, feel, believe, and do? What actions do we want them to take on a regular basis? And once you build that and you have clarity around that, now, remember, you might tweak this as time goes by. That's totally fine. But once you have that clarity, you can then build a framework around it and then bring in data so that you can keep track of how you're doing. Are we moving forward? Are we making the difference that we feel called to make? You were called for such a time as this. I'm so thrilled that you're taking the time to learn and to figure out what you need to do as a church. I believe that God will bring the clarity that you need because he chose you to be sitting exactly where you're sitting for such a time as this. Can I pray for you? Dear Jesus, I thank you for the opportunity that's in front of us. I thank you for how you've called us to lead at such a time as this. 
I pray that you would give your people wisdom and direction. You would show them exactly what they need to do, what steps to take. Bring the right people and resources around them so that um, they can do what you've called them to do, Lord. I, I thank you that we have everything we need because you are in us. We have everything we need, Lord, to do what you've called us to do. I thank you for an increased number of new people coming to our churches. I thank you for more relationships to take place. I thank you for people to take steps that will help them grow in their relationship with you. I thank you, God, for what you're doing in your church. We're so careful in the midst of all this to give you all glory and honor. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.